I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Wednesday, February the 4th, 2015. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu sent his condolences today to the King of Jordan over the murder of the Jordanian pilot by ISIS. A video showing the pilot's execution by the jihadist terror group was released yesterday and Jordan in turn executed two jihadist prisoners who were on death row. Netanyahu, speaking after a defense briefing today, drew parallels between ISIS and Iran and cited the recent attacks against Israel from Iran-backed terror group Hezbollah. Netanyahu once again warned of the threat of a nuclear Iran, saying he would, quote, vehemently oppose any agreement that would allow the Islamic Republic to arm itself with nuclear weapons, something the prime minister plans to address when he speaks to Congress next month. And in the wake of the political controversy generated by House Speaker John Boehner's invitation to Netanyahu to speak to a joint session of Congress, some House Democrats and Vice President Joe Biden may choose to absent themselves during the Israeli Prime Minister's address. Political news magazine Politico reports that according to various lawmakers and aides on Capitol Hill, Biden will not commit to attending the session, and dozens of Democratic legislators are also privately threatening to skip Netanyahu's March 3rd talk on the dangers posed by a nuclear Iran. The White House has let it be known that it was offended by Speaker Boehner's invitation without prior presidential approval, and analysts suggest that President Obama sees the Netanyahu appearance before Congress as an attempt to embarrass the administration over its attempts to negotiate a deal with Iran over its nuclear program. While there have been many bumps in the extremely strong U.S.-Israel relationship, political observers believe the current rift between Obama and Netanyahu represents an unfortunate moment in U.S.-Israel relations, which is now causing Democratic members of Congress to choose between loyalty to the president and their commitment to the state of Israel. A replacement for outgoing head of the United Nations Human Rights Council's investigation into Israel's actions in Gaza this summer has been named. Former New York Supreme Court Judge Mary McGowan Davis will replace William Shabbos, who announced his resignation from the post yesterday after allegations from Israel that he showed bias, referring to consulting work Shabbos did for the PLO in 2012. McGowan Davis was appointed in his place. In 2010, she served on a panel that monitored the implementation of the UNHRC's Goldstone Report regarding the Gaza War of 2009. The current UN UNHRC report will be presented in Geneva on March the 23rd. A far-left Greek group has claimed responsibility for an attack on the Israeli embassy in Athens last year. You may recall that on December the 12th, more than 50 bullets were fired at the embassy building from someone riding a motorcycle. The embassy was closed at the time and there was no one injured during the attack. The Associated Press and other media reports that following a phone call to a newspaper, police found a proclamation from an organization called the Group of Popular Fighters, or the People's Fighter Group. There have been no arrests as of yet. Top White House aide Philip Gordon will be visiting Israel later this month. According to I-24 News, Gordon, who is the special assistant to the president and White House coordinator for the Middle East, North Africa, and the Gulf region, will be traveling to Israel on February the 15th. He will speak at the Institute for National Security Studies annual conference in Tel Aviv, and meet with senior Israeli and Palestinian officials in Jerusalem and Ramallah, respectively. Israel and Holocaust historian Sir Martin Gilbert has died. The British Jewish Gilbert was Winston Churchill's official biographer. He was a prolific author writing over 80 books about the Israeli-Arab conflict, the Jewish diaspora, and the Holocaust. Gilbert was knighted in 1995 for services to British history and international relations. He died last night at the age of 78 after a long battle with cancer. British historian Simon Shama called Gilbert an astoundingly prolific historian who, quote, only wrote what he cared about and it showed on every page. Wynette said that Gilbert's funeral will reportedly take place in Israel tomorrow. Martin Gilbert is survived by his wife 
and three children. And turning now to our programming for tonight, beginning at 7 o'clock, JBS will air the historic World Gathering of Holocaust Survivors, the commemoration of the 70th anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz-Birkenau. Following at 9 o'clock, Mark Golub sits down with founder of the Paperclips Project, Whitwell Middle School Principal Linda Hooper, who talks about the renowned Holocaust Memorial Project. And then at 10 tonight, author Rabbi Ken Spiro gives a presentation on anti-Semitism across the ages. That's from the Fifth Avenue Synagogue in New York City. That's all coming up tonight on JBS and JBSTV.org. And that's the JBS News Update for Wednesday, February the 4th, 2015. I'm Tisha Bader.